What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel, this is Bowie, and this is my sadness teddy bear. And today we are gonna be talking about what to do if you get injured while you are roller skating. Street Skates is a YouTube channel full of roller skating tutorials, reviews, and general roller skating lifestyle videos. And if you are a person who is learning how to roller skate, or thinks roller skating is cool, or has been roller skating forever, I think that you'll find a home here, so you should click that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified every time that I post. So you're injured. Getting injured sucks. and. Injuries, honestly, are a part of roller skating. It is going to happen once you decide to join the roller skating community. Inevitably, at some point or another, you will get hurt. Whether it is a small injury or a large injury is totally just up to your journey. Um, but you can get hurt when you are a beginner. You can get hurt when you are very advanced and you know how to roller skate. I have gotten many, many injuries in my time, and so today I'm going to give you 10 things to do when you've been injured on roller skates. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do when you get injured on roller skates is you need to assess the situation, and I'm talking about in the moment when you are injured. So whether you are at the skate park or whether you are just like rolling down the street or any, if you're at the rink, anywhere that you're at, you need to stop everything and assess what's going on. Are you bleeding? Are you about to pass out? Are you in the way of someone else who might be coming towards you? What is happening? And that's going to determine your very first steps. Before I jump into like what you should or shouldn't do, I need you to know that I am not a doctor and none of this is actual doctoral advice. This is just advice coming from a person who's been injured quite a few times. So first thing, you need to make sure that you are able to be in a safe situation. So whether it is you being removed if you fell in the middle of the skate park, whether we can secure the area and make sure that no one is coming to hurt you, like coming in and not realizing that you are laying on the ground, or if you are able to move to remove yourself from that situation, that's going to be your very first step. Find out if you need to call an ambulance. Find out if your friend can take you to the urgent care. Find out if you just need to take a little bit of time off from what you're doing. Whatever is going on, you just need to make sure you stop for a second and allow everything to sink in. The reason why I say that is because we have a lot of adrenaline that kicks in and we also have this thing in our hearts that's like, I'm hardcore, I'm a roller skater, like, I'm not getting hurt, I have to roller skate. And in order for us to fight off that immediate feeling, we need to stop and assess our situation and then move on to step two. Step two, if you are injured, do not keep skating. Stop skating. Just, if you feel like you are injured, just do not continue being on your skates. And I know you're going to want to continue being on your skates. I have spent my fair share of time injured and continuing my session at the skate park because I wanted people to not think that I was lame or not think that I was hurt because I was embarrassed. And here's the thing, there is absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about. If you are injured, just take the skates off or have someone else take the skates off for you and do not continue skating because when you continue skating on an injury, especially immediately after you've injured yourself, your propensity to get hurt further is so high, especially considering, as I just stated, you have that adrenaline pumping through you. So you might not think that your injury is as bad as it actually is. So if you have an injury, you do not want to continue skating. Get someone else to take you home if you were skating to the place that you were at. Get someone to call you an Uber. Find a way to get those skates off and stop the skating. 
Step number three is to get yourself to the doctor. And I am the biggest hypocrite talking about this right now because I never want to go to the doctor. I just don't. I think that when I go to the doctor, it's pointless and that they're not gonna do anything for me and that it's a waste of money. But I am wrong. And the way I learned that was the hard way. So I broke my leg. I thought that I sprained my leg. So the reason why I didn't go to the doctor was because when you sprain your, your ankle, like they don't do anything for you. They just give you some ibuprofen and put you in a brace and tell you to stay off of it. So they tell you to do the rice method and then they send you on your merry way. And so I thought, I'm fine. I don't have good health insurance. I should just stay home and I can take care of my ankle the best. I know my body. I was so wrong. I spent two weeks trying to take care of my body and all I was doing was hurting it further because I didn't know that it was actually broken. So all of my rehabbing I was doing was actually making my recovery time longer. So go to a doctor. And here's the thing. I know you might not have insurance. I am in that exact same boat. But there are a lot of places that will take cash when you go in or there are a lot of places and people that will put you on a payment plan and the thing is and I struggle with this so hard the amount of whatever amount of money it is if you're scared of that like your ability to walk or move around or be healthy is priceless honestly and so make sure you find a way to get yourself to a doctor even if it's nothing and they say go home and take some medicine then you can just be relieved and know that you're not hurting yourself further by not going into the doctor lesson learned the hard way i was the most obstinate person about that and now i am i am pro going to the doctor right away because you might be delusional and watch the video of yourself falling back and not hear the crack even though many other people hear it. Step number four is to reach out to the community. Now this ties in with the last one. I know that a lot of people don't have money, don't have access to insurance, don't think that they can get any sort of medical help or anything like that. The community is here to support you and we all know what it's like to be injured. Almost everyone who roller skates has been injured at one point or another at some degree. And so the community has your back. A lot of times the community will fundraise for people who can't afford surgeries or can't afford to go to the doctor. I personally was able to get crutches and a scooter from people in the community that I'm borrowing them from because they have them because they were injured at one time. So know that the community has a lot of resources that they can offer you and support you through. The community is not going to shut you out because you're injured. The community is going to welcome you in so much more and support you in any way that they can. And all you have to do is reach out to them. The other day I was having, well, I've been having a pretty shite week and I kept it to myself and nobody knew what was going on because I kept it to myself. But as soon as I reached out to the community and was like, yo, I'm hurting, like I am in a terrible place and I am so sad. And once I expressed that, I had so many people reach out to me and give me kind words or try and find ways to support me. And that totally helped to pull me out of that moment and give me a little bit more of a positive perspective than I had had previously. All right, the next piece of advice is that I think that you should do your best to cry. So just cry. Let it out. All of those feelings that you're feeling, let all of them out. Get them out. So cry, whether you are crying because you're sad, whether you're crying because you're in pain, whether you're angry, get that anger out. If you are frustrated or disappointed or scared, Find ways to get those emotions out. For me, I've been spending a lot of time watching Grey's Anatomy. The reason why I've been watching so much Grey's Anatomy, besides the very attractive doctors and nurses, is that I find that show to be very sad. 
And so when things happen in that show and I cry, it's even though it's an indirect crying, it's like a release for all of the emotions and the things that I'm feeling inside of me. If you're a person who really likes journaling, journal it out. If you are a person who likes punching punching bags, do that unless you have hurt your wrist or your arm or your hands, then don't do that. But if you have a, a coping mechanism that you can use that can excavate those emotions from your body, now is the time to do it. I'm giving you permission. Cry, let it out, it's okay. I, when I was leaving the doctor, Shove bought me this bear and I don't even like stuffed animals. I really don't. I think that they're bulky and unnecessary. But do you want to know what happened when Shove gave me this stuffed animal? I cried like a little baby. I cried so hard because she gave me a stuffed animal. And you want to know what I've been doing? Cuddling with this stuffed animal every day because it makes me feel better and it makes me feel safe and supported and I feel like that is okay for me to feel and it is and so I am now giving you permission to feel all of the feelings and be in the dark for a little bit and just let it out okay your next step the next thing that you need to do number six and you don't necessarily have to do these in this order I just feel like this is a good order to kind of process through if you really are in a point where you just don't know what to do and you're like what do I do I don't know here's some steps to take number six is to take it easy so that means if you need to take some time off work take the time off work if you need to let your house get a little messy and just lay on the couch for a little bit do that if you need to cancel other things that you had planned People are going to understand. You need to take time for you. And if you have someone around you who's offering to like get you a glass of water or help you get to the bathroom or to hand you something that you would otherwise have to get up to get, allow them to do that. Give them the pleasure of helping you and take it easy. Here's, here's the permission you need. You don't need to hang out with that person that you made plans with. You don't need to get on that extra work call. You don't need to do those extra things that you had planned. Cancel them all. Take it easy. Rest. Allow yourself to sleep. Take a melatonin. Watch a TV show from start to finish. Do nothing. Just stare at the wall if you want. Take it easy. Light a candle for yourself. Lay in bed all day long. Do it. So then the next, number seven, once you are finally ready, it is time to get your body moving again. And this could look like getting even like the smallest part of your body moving, but getting your body moving again will help you to feel better and help you to pull yourself out of that, that like I'm stuck moment that you might be feeling. One thing that I've been doing is I've just been trying to stretch like my upper arms and stretch my back out a little bit. And that's something that I've been trying to do because it's helping me feel like I'm actually moving around or working with my body so I don't just feel so sedentary. Sometimes when you're laid up, like I've been told that I can't move my leg. So I have to just lay around with my leg elevated. I feel like this half of my body just is going to waste, just like evaporating into the midst. And I'm just like sad. And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to do things with this part of my body that makes me feel like I'm moving. Maybe I do some crunches. And no, I don't like crunches. But guess what? Crunches are making me feel better because I'm moving part of my body when I can't move the rest of my body. So any sort of movement that you can do is going to help. Do not move things that you are not supposed to move yet. If your doctor has said, do not move this certain part of your body, do not do that just because I have said so. Because again, not a doctor. But I will say that even doing yoga, but like yoga, that type of yoga that's just like I'm breathing, you know, with a video, <laughs> which like, 
I don't know to what level that actually is yoga. Maybe it's more meditation, but there are yoga videos out there that are literally like, breathe with me. And then it feels like you can check that off your list and say, guess what I did today? I did yoga. <laughs> so get your body moving when you can. I promise it will make you feel better, even if it's just like an upper body dance party. If you're just like, I'm just gonna do some TikTok like dances, but like with the top of my body, sometimes that'll make you feel better. So number eight, and maybe this should be like honestly aligned with all of the other numbers, but what I want you to do is I want you to prioritize your mental health because injury depression is so real and it comes on like a ton of bricks and it is strong and it is hard to evade and it can throw you into a pit of loneliness and and despair and fear and so many things can cascade onto that and your mental health is the thing that is going to help you get through this injury like your body may not be able to deal with anything and your mental health is the one thing that you can try and work on when your body is completely incapacitated. Now, I'm not saying I'm the expert on how to be healthy mentally. I'm not. And I still struggle with pulling myself out of that like ugliness and that pit of just depression and sadness and, and feeling weird and feeling like a burden and all of those things. But you have to find ways to crawl out of that pit. You have to find ways to reach out and connect with at least one other person. Tell someone else how you're feeling. Anyone. I don't care who it is. If it's a stranger, if it's me, if you want to reach out to me, you can talk to me about it. If you want to reach out to your best friend or your parent, you need to tell someone how you're feeling. Because only when you start talking about how you're feeling, are you gonna be able to process through that and get the help that you need? And even if that help is just someone listening to you, or even if that help is just someone sitting next to you and hugging you and saying, it's gonna be okay. For me, it was my girlfriend looking at me and telling me that I couldn't, like she looked at me and said, you can't let yourself get to that point. Like you have to pull yourself out. And for me, that's what I needed to hear because I needed to be reminded of who I am and what I'm capable of. And it's so easy to just let everything go and succumb to the sadness and succumb to the loneliness and succumb to the depression. But knowing that you, one, are not alone in the midst of that. And two, there are so many people in the skate community who know what that's like and will not only have your back, but will be there for you in the midst of that, I think is an invaluable thing to remember and to talk about. Okay, next up, listen to your body above everything else. So yes, listen to your doctors. Yes, listen to these random YouTube videos you're watching. Yes, listen to your friends and your family and listen to other skaters, but listen to your body the most. If something hurts, and it's like, I don't know, this doesn't feel right, feels weird, don't do it. Listen to your body first. So when you have experienced an injury or when you've experienced anything, honestly, your body will communicate to you. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but you're feeling what's going on in your body and your body will talk to you and you need to listen to your body. If you're feeling something that is more painful or making you more uncomfortable in your body and it's not something that the doctor specifically said you need to push through this level of uncomfort or pain you should stop doing it even if you're supposed to be able to walk by this certain amount of time you're supposed to be able to do whatever your body is going to be different than anyone else's body which means you are on your own journey and so don't compare yourself to other people's recoveries and don't try and just be the same as 
what is expected of you in your recovery journey. You must listen to your body. Listening to your body is going to be the best pathway to healing for you. And last but not least, number 10 is when you get to the point when you are at the physical therapy rehab section of your injury recovery, do all of that PT and do it diligently. One of the worst things that can happen is getting injured, healing up, and then getting injured exact in the exact same spot or in the exact same way right afterwards. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be strong. I want you to be able to skate forever. I want you to be able to be wearing your skates and doing all the things without fear and with all the strength that you can muster up and the way that you're gonna get yourself back on your skates sooner rather than later and stronger is by doing physical therapy and rehabbing whatever part of your body it is that has been injured. Now, not everyone can afford a physical therapist. I'm aware of that. But the wonderful thing about this YouTube thing is that there are so many physical therapists on YouTube who will tell you what exercises you should do for different injuries. Now, obviously, not all of those suggestions are gonna be perfect for you, but you can get the right understanding of what kind of exercises you should be doing for strengthening different parts of your body. Now, there's one, like, these physical therapists, they're um, Bob and Brad, and they're like the most famous physical therapists on YouTube or on the internet. I don't know, they have a theme song, it's amazing. But they're a really great resource. There are lots and lots of different physical therapy places that have videos to help people do physical therapy and rehab on their own. So do your rehab, do your physical therapy, get those exercises, strengthen up whatever it is that you injured previously, and make sure that you are all prepared to, in the future, be protected for skating. I hope that these 10 steps of what to do when you get injured while roller skating is helpful to you. And I'd like to leave you in this video with a nugget of wisdom that I got from one of my closest friends. Estrogen said to me that when they broke their leg and everyone that they know that has gotten injured or broken their legs during roller skating, it has made their experience that much stronger. It has made them stronger skaters. It has made them more in tune with their body. It has made them be more cognizant of what they're doing while they're on their skates. And while that sounds like really good advice and I'm passing it along with you, I'm still in the midst of it. And I don't know how breaking my leg is going to make me feel in the future. And I'm just doing what I can to take care of myself and make it so I can roller skate literally until I die. And so I'll keep updating you with how I'm doing and I hope that you can find some hope within that. That, you know what? Many, many, many people in the roller skate community have hurt themselves badly. And many, many, many of those skaters have come back and have said that roller skating afterwards is a little bit sweeter, a little bit more amazing. So I hope you'll go on this journey with me. And I know that while I'm still in it and you'll st you're still in it, it might be really hard but I have faith that we'll make it out on the other side and roller skating will be that much more sweet for us too. Thanks for watching this episode of Queer Girl Straight Skates. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're injured, I recommend that you watch this Injured Skaters playlist because I have put all of the resources I could think of into the Injured Skaters playlist for you. And um, if you wanna support me, you can shop on my Etsy shop, Cheers to the Queers, or you can become a Patreon, and I make vlogs every week for my Patreons. But most, most importantly, come on, Bear. Come on, Bowie. Say it with me. Cheers to the queers!